right, so here we go, making our way over towards Aaron Gell for the last game of the day. 24 matches that we've been going through. So plane path is up and, and it's it's pretty easy. It's fair. It is fair AF as the kids say. Yeah. I don't have anything to follow that up on. There's like, really nothing to follow like, up on. Yeah. yeah. It's just a dank meme reference. Je thank you, thank you for the insight and the Hello, conversation you're bringing kids. to me right now, Cam. Gen I appreciate Zers. it. All right. Twitter. So uh, oh, we got really Instagram now. We got Lazarus posted up around Yasnaya. No big surprise there. This is where they like to go. Yeah. Up towards the north of them, there's going to be uh, Stalber Mountain, where we saw a lot of the violence inside of our first game of the day. Now it's going to be about how do a lot of these teams adapt off of that. We've got a couple of shots coming out here from Valiate over towards Protege, taking that UAZ through the spot. Remember last time we talked about this, Valiate was kind of by himself. How many times are we going to find Valiate by himself, not just in the mid game, not just in the late game, but in the early game? We've seen this cat drop right next to someone already, and they already have Baho Waka down. I don't know how this happened. This looks to be an easy revive. It may have just been a parachute malfunction, Wait, but the rest no, of White no. Squad are already there to try and punish it. Okay, so we've got Valiate that's down in ruins. Yes. We've got Three members of Riot Squad that are at Watertown. Yes. Uh, well, well, I say two of them are at Watertown. One of them is at Rajok. Three members of Space Station Gaming that are at Rajok. And yeah. then Mystery that's way up in those god buildings towards the north. Listen, On the Valiate's, the al uh, Valiate's allowed to be away from his team. Mystery can be away from his team as well. I, this is just a very interesting spread as now it, look, look on the map. We even have Zenith that little purple dot That's going back behind Riot Squad's logo. Everybody's just cutting in between each other right now So it's gonna be interesting to watch Zenith how this is are going to regret Flex dropping away from South Island military base is usually where I have come to expect to see them And we finally get a circle that the island is this is not a military island unless we see a hard shift on circle two This is not going to be a military uh, island circle, but it is still a playable area in the early game. No one's going to go on that island, and that just means that this first circle is going to be really packed. Also, it's going to be a circle where we're not going to have to see Ghost Gaming doing massive rotations coming in. They're already inside the circle, yes. so we have to see how they choose into playing that. Last time we saw a circle like this, Ghost, we expected them to have good things. Same with the Rumblers, because they've historically succeeded on the type of circle like this. But they got devastated by Envy in the early game. And they have had a bad day so far, Ghost. And so they really need to make this game work. The circle is in their favor. They, sh they, they need to grab every single point possible out of this one. I mean, I feel bad. With Ghost, I had such high expectations coming into this phase. Like, I really did yeah. want to see them just murder the world coming into this. I thought Vegas moving in with the rest of the squad would just be so powerful, and we just haven't seen it executed. I mean, I don't think that Ghost is it at all in a, in a bad situation. They're just not meeting the expectation that I was really hoping for them for this phase yet. I don't know. I, I think they're doing worse than what you're implying. I, they started the day off in ninth place. They... Blah. They've only like just juggled around that Contrary area. Contrary has Cam, not been, just going after hasn't ghosts, been, thinking they're. I, I've never heard this story before. You know what? <laughs> All right, fine. I think that they're doing pretty okay. They're not in the best position in the world. Okay is not go. enough in the NPL. I know, they need to be doing better. That's what I, That's all I said. That's all I want them to do is be doing better. Fine. E right. United, Bill Frost and Schurer in a vehicle, driving along, getting into the circle themselves. They also had a big uh, advantage into where to rotate in the circle because they loot around the prison area, and they're taking this advantage to take Lumber Mill. It's a tricky situation to hold because the sight lines are very limited, but it is still high ground. This is an area they really like to play as well. This is one of their main rotation points whenever they end up in the circle. Naturally, they loop right next to this spot, so not big stuff that having to come out from them. Envy already making their rotation as well. Doing a little bit of a push over next to Milta, but at this point, we've got Ghost Gaming and Envy that tend to loot along this spot. They're yeah. very familiar with how each team moves. Yeah, I mean, it's Aaron Gull. If anyone knows how other teams move on any map, it's gonna be this one. Uh, they're going to the same area that they did before. I don't, I mean, I, I don't see Envy pushing along the beach. I don't think it's going to end the same way anyway, even if it did happen the last time. But still, it's a little bit of PTSD for me, and I'm, I'm sure Ghost, because that same clip was also used in head-to-head -head coming into today, so they probably had to see that on repeat time and time again. We've got a lot of movement that's coming in as yeah. Sonics, Lazarus, these guys are all just making their way up that hillside right next to prison, not quite up next to Lumberyard where EU United is. Sonics is kind of stretching that way a little bit, but not encroaching too far into where they know EU United likes to play. It's a lot of these teams that we see towards the top of the leaderboard moving very early, trying to carve out those positions that they really want to play from. I mean, that's part of the reason why they are so far up there. 
granted, we also happened to be looking at a lot of teams that were in this position to begin with, but being center early, being center in circle two, I think is probably like the single greatest decider on if you're going to have an easy game or if you're going to have a really, really difficult one. Obviously, it won't win the game for you, but as far as position in like in the early game, it's where you want to be. And so trying to get center of the first circle is only that powerful. But Lazarus, they're pushing up. They heard Sonic's drive past them. And so they actually got out of the vehicles because they didn't want to give their position away and try and get, set a little bit of a trap or at least have the element of surprise on their side. They just saw Vanquish coming up the eastern side of that cliff as well. One interesting thing to note, and we could see the map for just one second, is how close so many of these teams already are to each other. We're still at 64. Nobody has died yet, but a lot of these teams are stacked. I think that we have about eight to nine teams all within that one kilometer block that kind of takes up this area. So that just based off of the terrain and the layout makes it very difficult for these teams to engage on top of each other. Like, look how close Lazarus, Vanquish, Sonics, E United, Envy, and Ghost are. I mean, we even still have the Rumblers right up next to one of the members of E United as well. Less than half of this first circle is playable because of the water and because Saznovka Military Island is such a low percentage chance of being where the game ends on. So it's basically just gonna be one big giant fight in the early game for position on Lumber Mill and position looking over Milta. Well, if it shifts Northwest, I could change things. And Jenna says, this is not the way to start your final game of the day. Ah, uh, they should be fine. It looks like whenever they just jumped out of the vehicle, one of them, it gave them a little bit of a love tap, but there's enough members around that should be able to get the res off. There's gonna be a little bit of meds burned early. You can see that wild card making the approach over here. They had Endemic that was next to him as well as Zenith. So separating out, buying a little bit more space, but there's not a lot of teams that are really playing this part of the circle. So should be fairly safe depending on how hard they push. Yeah, but again, it's all just setting yourself up for the mid game. And we see all these teams trying to get center, but we're seeing a couple of teams as well rotate in late because they lost priority and they were forced to do so. And they're gonna have to stay around the side. We got about a minute left before it closes. And Sonics right now, they're just peeking around. But you can see how the top of this hill, it's not the same thing as playing the top of a hill on um, on Sanok, especially the, the you know infamous Northwestern Hill. You basically have to choose which side of the lumber mill mountain you want to be able to have vision on. Sonics chose west, United chose east. But if it shifts the opposite direction from where you're looking at, it could still be a rough rotation for you. Also, making sure you always leave somebody looking that angle. Yes. As in case somebody gets forced away from the position that they were trying to play from, becomes big on this hillside. Because there's a lot of like rock formations and the way that the hills play out with these little trenches that can make it to where a team can end up very close to you if you're not paying just the utmost of attention. Baha Walker peeking over, spots that wild card, is gonna pull out his mini, sends out a couple of shots, see if he can't get a lucky headshot or not, but actually has to fall away because of pressure from another angle. Uh, Space Station Gaming is really about the only team playing up towards the north. We're seeing if anybody was going to rotate down. So it feels like they were trying to capitalize off of this, get some kills off of it. Alamo is a pretty comfortable position to play from. So, I mean, there's like two buildings over there called Alamo. Which one, which one do you want? Do you like the, the Alamo next to the hill or the Alamo in the field? I hate both. Oh, oh okay. all right. All well, right. then, everyone was wrong. Everyone was Let's... wrong here. It was a hard shift towards the south. It is now, I think, guaranteed to go to the military base. This Let's was, go. it's great for us. I, Matt, I see you really happy. I'm excited as well, but the players are not Look, happy right now. I love how production was not even prepped for it. They were like, this is where the circle's gonna yeah, go. They and zoomed they in, it, it they zoomed it in onto what I was talking about, but yeah. it hard shifted down towards the south. Not a single team was on the military island and they all have to rush there right now. Do it's, they go over the east bridge? It's do Mad they, Max time. Do they, it's Mad Max time. Do they go over the eastern bridge? Do they go take a boat on the eastern coast? Or do they swap or swing around into the blue and take the western oh. bridge? That's pretty big knock coming out. Came out already getting knocked inside of this. Player 1 Esports making the push off the side of it. Lamplot's trying to get an angle back over towards h -win. Does spot him out, but look, h -win does get against that wall. Profi's trying to get the outside angle for this. David is already down. h -win goes down. Now Profi's just looking for this. Does get it down of his own onto Lamplot. You gotta see where Nerf's at. Actually, don't even see. I think he's a couple, I think he's not even around this fight right now. So it's all on, to, oh, there he goes. Finally, Nerf does appear on it. They were just right on top of each other. So angle off to the side of it. Dietrich trying to hit a couple of shots back over towards Profi. It's now a 2v2 inside of this skirmish. Yeah, but a couple of shots coming in from an off angle. It sounds like onto player one. This is a rough fight for everyone involved. 
but I like the spread that Nerf and Profi are holding right now, but Aguila right next to the building is going to hear the rotation by Profi. Could catch him by surprise. Rez is trying to come through. Nerf has the angle back over towards Aguila, not taking the shots, realizing he can go for the sidestep, gets the spray back over towards him. More damage coming out, trying to get the shots through that fence. See, Dietrich's trying to go for a little bit of protection back over towards it. Does force him away, but in the end, it does not matter as he is going to bleed out. Profi, Nerf, holding two different angles back towards player one esports. Dietrich's trying to get a little bit more damage, but this is smoke and utility already being burned this early inside of this circle. So now we can see Nerf retreating back. He's drawing all the attention that he can, but Profi is using it, trying to capitalize. He's going to take a little bit of damage as he does get spotted out. The two from player one esports now pushing back over towards Profi as he's trying to get the peek back over. This is a wide angled peek over for it, so they realize it's too dangerous. Dietrich is now by himself. Another down on to player one. It's just Dietrich's left trying to make something out of this. Profi and Nerf are trying to make it work elsewhere. There's chaos all around the map. Riot but Squad, Nerf, he's going aggressive. Riot Squad was taking shots at this across the canal and actually connected with one of them, applying a little bit more pressure over towards player one esports. Oh, the Molly hit! comes out, trying to go for the res onto this. No time. It, no, I don't think he's going to be able to get it off. Is it going to tick down? And there we go. Dying in the Viking funeral is going to be player one esports. But now we're back here on the Western Bridge where a lot of teams are starting to arrive. Zampa's trying to hold it out by himself. You see Endemic on a boat just below them, but Tickleton is right up towards the north. Here's a replay of the beginning of that fight where K-Mine gets a couple of downs who gets knocked himself. But the blue is starting to chunk. Look how many teams are up in the blue. Not only is it the Western Bridge, we see the Eastern Coast where everyone tried to go for boats up here in the Povka. Whenever you're fighting for boats in Lepovka, about, I don't know, a kilometer outside of the safe zone, life's not going too well. Two members from Lazarus are still pushing back down, but it is just so much danger that's happening. Look, Everybody in the blue. Look how few teams are actually in the circle, and phase two is about to close. Zampa alone apparently was enough pressure to force Wildcard and the rest of Sonics away from that bridge, and they got to come back through farm area to the eastern bridge, and the bridge is still in play. There is still so little land. Uncivil does go down, but it, everyone's in the blue right now. We got Reno trying to get a couple of shots back over towards Luke. Damage being exchanged back for this. Luke somehow just narrowly alive trying to cling to life with this. Reno does go down inside of it. Follow-up is going to come through. So three members of Lazarus looking back over towards Vanquish Esports. Fozu trying to figure out what he's going to do. Just right on the side of the safe zone trying to figure out what they're going to... We still have Endemic, Sonics, Wildcard, Low Key that have not even made it into the newer safe zone at this stage. There you is a little bit of the northern main island that's still in play, and it looks like what a couple of teams might be vying for, but I think four teams might be pushing that direction. And it's not even you can't even call it a proper land amount. It's basically the beginning of the bridge. Everyone's going to be fighting out the blue for the next five minutes. So we're going to see a lot of blue damage, a lot of deaths to the blue. Pretty pretty right I now. I hope that everybody packed a ton of stims moving into these fights because they, need they are going to be huge. Whoever got the best loot to work with, as you can see, something just gives it up and has to die in just drowning. So now we've got foes who take it a little bit of damage. Lazarus trying to capitalize off this. They don't want anybody coming up back behind them. They want control of at least something in this area. There is a little bit of the peninsula that's just to the south of them that they can make a play off of if they want to stay there, but that's a death sentence in and of itself. It is because there's no boat there unless they can find one on the Milta Beach, and if you, there's no time to swim at this stage in the game. All right, so now, Sonics, they are inside the safe zone trying to figure out what they want to do. Wildcard's still out in the blue in the distance, you can see, trying to figure out how they're going to make the approach, but Sonics is going to be pushing along a path most likely where Space Station Gaming is going to see them. Oddly enough, Genesis just capitalized off of this move back down towards the south, and it's taking a couple of pot shots here and there towards everybody as they rotate as finally Space Station Gaming does get sightlined back over towards Sonics, and Sonics has to figure out what do they do next. They got to get into the blue. That's certainly a start, but SSG, they're just going to be holding strong here in this field, trying to keep everyone who is not on the island out away from them. And it's a wide, ambitious spread, but it's a Tony. good opportunity to try and get kills if they can get the shots. Tony just pushed up very aggressively inside of a vehicle, taking a couple of shots back over towards Space Station Gaming. It's buying more time for the rest of his team to come through, trying to find different angles. Wooly's trying to go for a northern approach onto this, but that's going to be where Wildcard is. Keenan's also looking like he's going to take a similar path onto it, but Wildcard did manage to move on the other side of this, and they've got shots coming after them. That's going to be E United again on the other side of the canal. Delol trying to make a break for it. Rush away, maybe pick up his teammates or search for a boat or, or go somewhere. 
On the other side of things, Tony, Tony B's trying to fly in. Very low on HP, though his stims are pumping. Gonna get the first aid kit, but Val is here readying the nade. This should be an easy finish. First one goes, actually, it's just close enough. Second one doesn't make it over. Valiant has to fall away because of pressure, but the circle shift away from water goes where we all knew it would, down south. Envy with the crossroads compound, with the center positional control. And Zenith Skindo just in the water, swimming, not, not a care in the world, just letting everybody else fight it out. Wildcard's gotta figure out what they want to do. Again, shots coming from the other side of this. As you can see, Kickstart and the rest of the boys catching some airtime and rolling down the other side of the hill, trying to get away from this as Pistola time dies. Everybody's out in the water from Wildcard. Now they have to figure out what do they do. They've lost their vehicle to the water, trying to get away from the bullets. They know they're gonna have to walk across this bridge Another member goes down as Kickstart is just trying to find somewhere that is safe from the hail of bullets that's coming after. There's nowhere safe. E United are basically keeping everyone out. Space Agent Gaming haven't gotten as many kills as I expect them to be able to, but E United, they're going to be picking up the scraps of whatever's left over. Lazarus, in the meantime, you can see just off on the side, Ayla was able to find a boat and pick up the two teammates from the southern Milta Peninsula. Kickstart, going to go for the revive on a Pentalol. He wants as many men as he can get on his back. Well, he's got Space Station Gaming and Sonic. I want to make an approach. Baja's trying to get the spray back over towards Wooly. Wooly's going to end up in a path where he might actually see where Wildcard is, as this is just a disaster up towards the north for all of these teams. They're just taking so much damage from teams, from the blue. They still have to push down across this bridge. They have to hit about the halfway point on the bridge to be in a safe spot. <laughs> That's not even safe, because it's so open. And Space Station, they don't have, they have so few kills from this position. Wooly does go down to Baja Waka, so that's an easy third kill for them. But Keenan's gonna be rushing in the Sonics. They had a good resurgence on the latter half of the day, but that run may just end here. They could easily go out in the double digits. They're out in the blue. It's moving ahead of them. You can see Space Station Gaming already hopping inside of their vehicles. A long distance grenade trying to see if they can get anything out of it, but it's just not gonna connect as everybody from Space Station Gaming is already on the move. But are they aware of Wildcard and their position? Look, Kickstart's actually already on the bridge. Pentalol's gonna take a couple of shots towards them. That's gonna be one that's out. Seat Swat's coming through just to drive through it. Shots Valiate. are gonna come through to follow that up. Nice play coming out from Valiate. Baja still hold the top side of this Kickstart now. Gotta be a little bit cautious as he's the only member from Wildcard that's at this high point on the bridge. The other guy's down below him, and it's just a push coming out from Space Station Gaming. But in the meantime, EU United are still shooting up this direction, so it's not even a really comfortable spot for Space Station or Kickstart. Even if they were in the circle, Kickstart just has to run. A lot of shots coming in for Valiate, has to fall back and heal. But Shiru, does he find the final shot? The prone comes through, the first aid comes through, and eyes back onto Space Keenan. Station. Keenan's still up. Ah, not anymore. We spoke just a little bit too soon. Valiate oh. finds a fourth kill. But it is a distraction. And so now, the Space Station Gaming going to have to make this cross, figure out what they do. Wildcard's kickstart, still holding the angle. I believe Space Station Gaming knows exactly where he is, trying to just use anything they can on the bridge to deny sight lines from anything that E United is shooting. You can see bullets just coming across the side from it. E United is just making everybody's life absolute hell that is crossing this bridge right now. And Kickstart moving into a little bit more of aggressive spot, seeing if he can get anything. Grenade's gonna blow up right back behind him. Valley has an idea of where he's at, but the grenades are just not gonna do enough damage yet. Baja walks out of smoke. He goes down. Kickstart still looking back. He heard the footsteps from Valley. Gonna go ahead and get another point off of it, but there you go. It's actually gonna be some shots coming out from Bale Frost that gets the down. Valley's gonna capitalize and pick it up, and Valley's now finding himself in the exact same spot, and he goes down as well. Out in 12th, and actually, surprisingly, Kickstart wasn't the last player of Wildcard. Adam has been swimming this entire time, and it's going to give them at least one more placement point. They're not in the points just yet, but he's still alive. Can we say that Kendo deciding to just jump and swim this and not deal with I'm any of I'm surprised he's not dead to the blue himself. Well, there's so much stuff going on that E United can shoot. They're not really surveying the water, I would bet. You know, they're yeah. caught up in shooting at everything that's going on on the bridge right now. So, circles popped. Everything's calmed down towards the north. We do have Envy that's right in the middle of the circle. We do have Antenna Tower as well with a couple of shots going back and forth between this, but already down to 32. United right now still four strong and they're still trying to make sure they clean up everything coming in from the north. But Kendo sneaking in on this could be big for them. It looks like they spot out Adam. Stab is trying to make it work as well as Bill Frost. Yeah. They also got to worry about the pressure from Genesis. Adam does drown, denies the point. The heal comes in on Bill Frost, and it's just nerfed left. Looking back over towards E United, got Profi down, trying to find some type of angle. He knows that E United might decide to push on this. That's just the way they have been playing today. So aggressive, this team. 
going for a peek back and forth, but that actually does. We were talking about the Ballad of Kindo, the hero by himself making the swim, finally does make landfall back behind this. So E United has to be, at this point, they feel probably pretty comfortable that there is no one that's gonna be approaching off of that vector. They've just kind of caught, they're caught up in looking at what Genesis is doing right now. Yeah, so that actually could be huge. It's always important, kids, to have a player swing and check behind you every once in a while, but Kendo could make something of it. There's still four players to be united. I expect a trade to happen via spotted. Oh, oh wait, no, Nerf may have spotted Kendo, yeah. so that's gonna push Kendo away. Nerf is taking pot shots at him and thinking somebody on a unite, and United looks back like, what is he? Sh oh, Yo. there's a person back over there. <laughs> Uh, well, Kendo, um, this is going to be rough for you from this point forward. A little bit of a skirmish going on between the Rumblers and Lazarus. Exchange goes back and forth. You can see Los is already down on one side of this. Pretty Curdy down as well as Lazarus just gets... They're dead that fast. I, I love the push, the direction that Lazarus pushed away from Novo. But Rumblers are in the way, and they won that fight fair and square. And Waldo, he's been having a heck of a day for himself. Only getting the rumbles have only been getting better and better throughout the day. The revive comes in under low. It's gonna stay four strong on the area that is easy to call as the lightest population. They are on the low ground. Loki are gonna be above them. You know, you see a couple of shots coming out from Chuba and the boys, but the smoke line is gonna allow rumblers to cross back over. Now it's just going to be about what can Loki capitalize off of this. They've got four kills, trying to find some type of angle, get something else out of this because they are right on the edge of the circle. They know that they're probably going to have to make their way down this hillside, and they don't want to have to do it through the rumblers. So they do get the down now, just trying to connect to get a flush out of it. Chubba Bubba's just trying to find anything on this angle. But again, it's just the rumblers using smoke, using utility, having to move as they go. But now that means a lot of utility use coming up for the rumblers as they're going to be starting to move into Envy's fire. Lines. Yeah, Envy, well, Envy the only team in the circle, and they have the only compound in the circle, and so they certainly have, like, without that strongest position. But look, Nerf. Nerf's getting closer and closer. Still Crawling through on. smokes. Still. Nate's coming out from me United. He's moved away from the tree, and they think that he's along that tree line, so he's just creeping up next to him. I mean, he's trying to survive for as long as possible at this point, just kind of inching. Not giving away any movement positions. Grenades are still landing next to him. Good awareness on that. Not going down to one of them yet. But that smoke is eventually going to drop. And he is full on surrounded. Can he at least get a flush onto it? He does take that bail rush. But he is going to go down. So one more point coming out of the Valiant stand from Nerf. He's able to find one. That's all you can hope for. There's no way that a 1v4 happens unless E United just completely brain dead throw it away. All right, now we've got a lot of the guys from E United. They're still playing that low ground, but you can see Loki having to move Rumblers right next to him, having to just traverse that really dangerous it's hillside. It's rough pushing Chubba up north. goes down as he drops just a little bit too far, and it's going to be Riot Squad taking a couple of pot shots. Big's falling on the same angle. He goes down to it, and it's just popping up roses for Riot Squad as they just get a mop up everybody as they drop off that cliff. <laughs> they don't even need to be the aggressive riot squad that we know in order to get these kills. They just come right on their doorstep. Lobes is down. He must have taken a different path or at least took that same path in a way that didn't kill himself, but he's ready for the rumblers. But we know riot squad have an angle looking on them. And so Lobes could easily kind of play spoiler into this engagement if the rumblers get too weak. A smoke's already deployed, but look at the shots just coming in. Rumblers have very little space to work with. Lobes can just let riot squad do the work for him at yeah. this point. Kindo no, you've lived so long. Is your time almost done? He hears it coming from, gets the shots on Shiro, spins back over, trying to get the shots on Taylor. Jay Can you a second? Cap, but no, it's going to be Stab that takes him down after that long, arduous swim in the end. Doesn't get much out of it. But the Rumblers do take a couple of, uh, it looks like they got a, a down inside of that. His right squad is still peppering bullets into the side of him. Taylor Jay's got to be super cautious of that blue. Yeah, it's going to be a rough revive for Shiro as well. Hopefully they go for the revive and at least deny the point from Zenith, even if the blue is gonna take it right after the revive comes. But, and you can just see the lack of cover that these guys have. A couple of nades thrown out from the south, from Vegas. Ghosts are also still in this. I don't know how many kills they have, but Pax and Lowe's. Low key, trying to make it work. But you can see what we're talking about with funneling that happens though. Riot Squad's taking those shots up towards Rumblers. That's forcing them to go back over to yeah. where Envy and Ghost are at. Vegas running right up to where they see Envy. Envy's got the prime position. They've got the real estate on this circle and Ghost wants it. Molotov trying to come back over there. Is it gonna land and connect and do enough damage to really stop this push from Ghost or is it just gonna inspire them to push in? Hats by himself holding this angle. He's gonna have to get something out of this while the rest of the team doesn't have the proper firing angles. He does get it down onto Shrimzy though. A good initial nade to start it off. 
above him, but Corey comes in, gets the down on the pack caps, as well as the full flush, and so they have stolen this building away. Unfortunately for Ghost, this building is not yet in the circle. Envy split, there is one in separate buildings, which was a risk, you can see exactly why that is, but if they get the revive, they can remain four up, and then focus on taking Interrogate. Interrogate's running away, trying to fall away from this, understanding the risky position that he's in right now, and actually, he's gonna have to cross over towards Moody and Pride, but E United, they're taking a lot of shots from Pride, that's a down and a flush for them. Taylor J does go down. Taro's trying to make the push back over. It is so dangerous. Hopping into the vehicle. Ghost can't take the shots. They've got the smoke. Waldo's trying to pepper down towards them, getting a little bit more damage. Doesn't quite connect into getting a knock, but Rumbler's aware they have to move. Loeb's trying to capitalize off of this moment. Also take some damage of his own, but that kind of stops Rumblers. They don't know which direction they want to go now. And capitalizing off of that is going to be E United taking those long range shots at him. I don't know what direction you can go. They're going to have to push in through low key. But again, the angles from Riot Squad and E United are a lot. Trades back and forth. The Demic is eliminated in the meantime, but a lot of damage towards low key. Jerry Poppins, though, the only one remaining, trying to make something out of this. And low key are eliminated, but look at the damage from the blue. I don't know if he's going to be able to get uh, the first aid off in time. This is going to be it for the Rumblers as well as they go down. Ghost now running the 2-2. Two -two. We've got E United with two up, taking a couple of shots back over towards Riot Squad. They have managed to make it in the safe zone, but they do have one member down. Envy as well has a member down. As look at Ghost, very aware of where E United is, trying to get some more damage off. Ghost opting to not really play in over towards E United as of yet, just tossing a grenade here or there towards them, and that's making it so difficult for anything that Riot Squad to make this crossover. Shuru, though, outside in the blue, gonna go down to the stab, just trying to make the crossover to the tree, narrowly gets it. He's just barely inside, but that's easily within nade range. The only question is, can Ghost put enough pressure on Envy to keep that from happening? Shuru, well, that point almost went to Riot Squad. So we've got the 2-2 split from Ghost, trying to figure out where they want to go, how they want to handle it. They've got Envy gets the circle again, but you can see every single time it happens, everybody just pushes them from every angle, and there's just too many sight lines to cover for the three men that are holding it. And there are actually two squads with more people alive than Envy. Envy only have three. There are Ghost and Riot Squad, both amazingly with four, and then Stab trying to play Lone Wolf, trying to find something out of this. I'm amazed that Riot Squad has managed to make it into the location they haven't. They've used so much smoke. They finally do have Leda that goes down. You can see Mysteries playing out the backside of this, trying to figure out what he can do. Shots are gonna come out from Ghost that's gonna distract Taro, so gonna lose the angle back over for it. And still, Riot Squad is just having to jump from smoke to smoke as Ghost pincering down more and more onto Envy, and Envy's aware. It's too hazardous. They draw too much attention back towards Riot Squad. Ghost is now making their way towards the foot of the building. I don't even know how Riot Squad was able to make it past that road, but that, that also opened up a window for Ghost to stab. Push stab, though. He he's trying it. to make it. I think he broke line of sight. He's up and on the north side. Envy, they don't have control. They have zero control of this area. They were not making it work. There's Danger is on their doorstep. There's too many people, too many different angles. You can see Pride aware of where Stab is at. Stab somehow surviving through this, but Ghost trying to push up the Got building. The where two different members. That Taro goes down. Drassel just walks up and takes that one. Now we've got one member in each building coming out from Envy as the aggression is just coming from every single angle. Two go down for Ghost, so that makes it harder. Riot Squad still have four up, but Vegas and Drassel in that building right below Moody is huge. That's a smoke coming out maybe to allow Shrimzy to crawl in. I don't know if that's gonna be an attempted revive or just to allow him to crawl in for information, but a nade's gonna finish him off. Riot Squad still with four. How the hell do they still have four I, members? I they've don't know. They've been down so many and times trying to make this cross. should not have let that happen. I cannot believe that they are in this position they are. They have five kills, all four members up, and everybody is just going after Envy. But look at where the ending point of this game is. It's in the middle of the road. This is going to be I, I'm gonna call it, this is a Riot Squad win. There is, I don't see them throwing this. All the other squads are on the opposite side, having to fight each other before they even come into the team that has the most players up. There are so many small peak battles that are going on. You can see Stabs looking back over towards Pride. Tries, Pride's trying to hold him out. There's the fight that's happening with Moody up towards the top, trying to figure out what he can do. Stab is just bouncing from cover piece from cover piece. If he peeks around on this, Riot Squad doesn't see him, but look, capitalizing off that is gonna be Ghost as they just charge up, take down Moody, but grenades are gonna come out. Now it's just Dragon. Rassle. This is an aggressive push by Riot Squad. They want zero opening for any other team. Pride still left for Envy, trying to find something. 
They know they have the numbers right now, and they are trying to capitalize on it. We said the fact that Riot Squad is aggressive. Look at this. They are just strangleholding this circle right now. They've moved past the midpoint. They have control over the center of the circle, plus several meters. Everybody has to walk through them to make it to where that last point is going to be at. They are, even with the manpower, they are not going to leave it up to an aim duel, so they are taking the fight to the north side of the road. They are keeping them trapped in this building. The pre-fire comes through, tries to take out Pride, but he's not crossing just yet, but look at the flank by Mystery. Now we've got Pride, did manage to approach up. Everybody is just fighting around this one building. Three teams stacked up around it. Drassel looking back oh, over. Vegas does connect with VZ. That buys a little bit more space. Pride still looking up the stairwell. He's actually pushing back up to where Ghost is at. Ghost is trying to figure out how they want to handle this. Meanwhile, Mystery is still playing around the outside of it. Drassel trying to think, okay, is there an angle? Which grenade can I throw from? Meanwhile, Envy steps up. There comes a the shot from Pride, but he goes down, and now it's all onto Drassel looking back towards Riot Squad, who still has four or three members up at the time. Time. Can he get the res back over to Vegas? No time for it. Gets the shots on a protege. Now it is a 2v1 as two members from Wyatt Squad are just waiting for Drassel to jump. He's at half-life. He cannot find the angle. Drops down. Looks back over, but Riot Squad is going to walk away with it. Riot Squad played that final moment perfectly. They did not allow Drassel to get any angle onto more than one player at a single time. Forced him to either die to blue or drop off into our crossfire. Eight kills for Riot Squad. I, that's not the big story for me. It's making that push from Envy. And we say, sometimes whenever you have the center of the circle and the circle favors you, you have to hold it. And it's harder than it sounds. Like, oh, you just got the circle the whole way. That game shows how hard it can be. You also, in this game, you also don't just get the circle. Do you remember where the first circle was? Great. Yeah. Do you remember where the second circle was? Great. What about the 